Hi, Paul here from Easy Composites, and today we're going to be looking at how you can use a 3D printer to generate high quality, accurate patterns to go on to produce real carbon fiber parts. In this particular project, we're making these ultra lightweight shell components for a drone. This version of the tutorial has been cut down to provide a good overview of the entire process without going into too much detail at every stage. But if you're looking to follow this process yourself, then we do have the full 20 minute version along with detailed notes and product links available for free on the Easy Composites website. Just follow the link in the description below. So in essence, what we're going to be covering in this video is 3D printing the patterns, coating this with an epoxy coating, generating a mold from that pattern, and then using that mold to go on to make the carbon fiber parts themselves. We're focusing on FDM print technology, which is an obvious choice because of its affordability and accessibility. There are many other print technologies out there and I'm sure many of them would be suitable for pattern making. I will stress at this point that we're not 3D printing experts. If you're looking for advice on material or printer selection, I do recommend that you speak to an expert. We got some excellent help from Dynamism and I'm more than happy to recommend them, so I'll put a link to them in the description below. The printer I'm using today is the excellent Ultimaker S5, which is a commercial grade machine and although not the least expensive machine out there, does offer excellent plug and play capability. However, it's perfectly possible to generate patterns like these on any properly set up FDM printer. I'm not gonna go into any great detail on how I actually did these prints. There's loads of information out there if you want it. But in essence, I used the draft settings straight from Cura with a 20% fill to do these patterns. Now the surface fidelity might not be the highest with these settings, but as we're going to go on to coat them with epoxy resin, that really doesn't matter. So I chose speed over refinement. Now, an obvious question you might be asking is, why not directly 3D print the mold itself? And that is absolutely possible, and it's something we're going to cover in a later video, but it does come with some limitations. For this project, we're going to be going down the more traditional composites manufacturing route of making a mold from a pattern. And this creates really durable molds with a high quality surface finish that can be used to go on to make hundreds of parts. So let's take a look at the print and what we need to do to prepare that to create the mold. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just remove any support material and the brim material here. These patterns were too large to print in one, so they need assembling by keying with sandpaper and bonding with superglue. Whilst the glue is setting up on those, let's take a close look at the surface that you get on a typical 3D print and why you might have to consider this before going on to make a mold. So we've got a part under the microscope here and you can quite clearly see the individual layer lines from the print. Now, if I take the edge of this knife blade, I can actually get underneath the edge of those because they have a rounded profile to them. And when you come to make the mold, the resin would do that same thing and it would mean that the part would lock against the pattern, almost like gears meshing together. So we need to address that by smoothening it out. And the way we're going to do that is by sanding it down and giving it a coat of epoxy resin. The entire surface needs a good coverage of sanding with 240 grit to promote the bond with the coating resin. The resin we're using is the XCR coating resin. Now that's specifically designed for coating applications just like this. Once mixed with the hardener, the XCR is applied in a thin, even film, avoiding drips and runs using a similar method to gloss painting. So that's the first coat of resin down. With these patterns, I'm going to be doing two coats. So I need to wait for this first coat to get to a B stage. That's the point where the resin is still slightly tacky and the next layer will adhere well to it. So I'm going to leave this now and come back to it shortly. So the second coat is simply a repeat of the first. So again, just a thin brush application. The resin is now fully cured and we're left with a rock solid glossy surface finish. It would be possible to make a mold straight from these, so apply the release agent and create the molds. However, if you want a perfect surface finish, the best way to achieve that is to flat this surface down with a fine wet and dry paper and then polish it with compound. Here, we're starting out wet sanding with 800 grit paper and then working through to 1200 grit. After sanding, the surface is brought through to a full gloss by buffing with NW1 polishing compound. I've now got these patterns up to a standard that I'm really pleased with and I'm ready to go on to make the mold. So first thing I need to do is prepare the surface. So I'm going to use a mold cleaner and then follow that with a chemical release agent. With the release agent applied, we're now ready to go on to make the molds. These patterns would be suitable for almost any room temperature cure mold making system. But for this project, I'm going to be using one of our high temperature epoxy mold making systems. 
Applying the mixed gel coat is not dissimilar to applying the XCR coating resin, but the coats do build up a bit thicker. Two coats are applied and each is left to B stage before it's ready for the backing. This is the EMP160 moulding paste. This is a very fast and reliable mould reinforcement method, best suited to smaller and more intricate moulds. This paste consists of both an epoxy resin and chopped glass fibres. This is mixed with the hardener by hand and then laminated at a thickness of around 10mm before being left for 12 hours to initially cure. With the moulds now cured, we can release them from the patterns. The first thing I'm going to do is just sand around the edge and that will remove any mechanical lock that we've got around the edge of the barrier. Because these are high temperature moulds intended for pre-preg use, they do need post curing in an oven before they can be used. The moulds now have several coats of Easy Lease release agents applied and the pre-preg layup can begin. If you're not familiar with pre-preg, it's a type of carbon fibre that already has the resin impregnated into it and it needs to be cured at high temperature. In volume production, you would use pre-cut material, but this is a prototype so I'm simply tailoring it on the job. Laminating a single ply component like this takes only a matter of a few minutes. That being said, great care and attention is still required to ensure that material is laminated down firmly against all of the contours without bridging. After laminating, the parts are covered in an unperforated release film and then all three moulds can be placed into a single envelope vacuum bag and full vacuum can be pulled. After vacuum bagging, the parts can then be loaded into an oven. Here they are cured on a ramp and soak cure profile that peaks at 120 degrees C. I will reiterate that there are many other processes which can be used to make carbon fibre parts that don't require an oven for the cure. After curing, the parts can be removed from the vacuum bag and demoulded. So here we have the parts from the moulds. I'm really pleased with the results that we've got here. It is very hard to convey on camera, but these parts are incredibly light. For instance, this part in its untrimmed state weighs only 18 grams, which is absolutely perfect for this drone project. So there we go. That's how we create a production ready mold from a 3D print and then go on to make the lightweight carbon fiber parts themselves. Now this is only one of the many ways that you might use a 3D printer to help in your composites projects. So take a look out for some of our other videos where we'll be exploring subjects like how to directly 3D print the mould itself. If you're not already, please consider subscribing and you'll get notified of new videos as and when we release them. And as always, a massive thank you to all of our customers who make producing these videos possible. Don't forget the full 20 minute version of this video which covers the whole process in more step-by-step -step detail along with links to buy all of the products featured is available on the Easy Composites website. Just click the link shown on screen now or in the video description below.